The winglets, devices for increasing the efficiency of the wings, have been damaged. The undersurface of the wing has been ground away, revealing the foam underneath. Uh, the wing tip, uh, uh, the wing tip uh, deflection looks about as predicted. Bert Rutan carefully examines the airplane and faces the decision of whether or not to abort the flight. The damage to both wingtips doesn't seem to have caused any fuel leaks or any vents to be blocked. But it's clear that the winglets themselves will come loose and cause drag. They will have to go, somehow. Well, it's all there. Yeah, he'll probably lose it. Should we try to knock it off? Oh, we are. Right then, it's fast, and the airplane will never go. The suggestion of knocking the winglets off is rejected. Bert's idea is to increase Voyager's speed by 10 knots in the hope they'll be blown away. The right winglet starts to shake. But there's no need for any intervention. The problem is solved naturally. Again, they move in to look at the damage. The brake appears to have been relatively clean. There are some wires trailing, but as far as they can tell, there's no risk of an electrical short circuit, which is comforting given the amount of fuel Voyager is carrying. Mike feels that the wings are bent unevenly. They examine them closely. No rush at all, you got days. I think they're bent about the same, Mike. I really do. I think it's an illusion because your eye picks up the angle more than the deflection, maybe. Uh, the left no winglet problem. is still hanging there, but it too is blown off without need for any other intervention. We got the camera back on, and we have lost, lost the left winglet. Bert devises some on-the-spot stability and control tests for Dick to carry out. The results indicate that Voyager is flying well. A joint decision is made that the flight should go ahead. Out over the Pacific, the time comes for Bert, Mike, and Sally to say goodbye to Dick and Gina. There was certainly something uh, to be said about, I wonder when and what, con and what conditions we will see these people again, or even if we will. Uh, when we first started planning the Voyager flight four years before that, we thought we will spend the money somehow to chase it all the way around the world and keep an eye on them. It wasn't planned that we would turn them loose like that. Uh, and it was emotional, no question about it. Uh, you know, we waved goodbye and they waved. I guess the scariest thing for me is I turned back towards California and I couldn't see California. <laughs> I'd never float out in the ocean that far ever. <laughs> so I had to recheck the compass to make sure I could make it home. Yeah. <laughs> hey, As Bert Rutan turned for home, behind him, heading out into the Pacific, were a man and a woman whose lives depended on the airplane he had designed to carry them both around the world.